We're going to be reviewing the right triangle trig. You've got to know the difference between right triangle trig and non-right triangle trig because secondary two, you focus on right triangle trig. So what makes something a right triangle? It has a 90 degree angle. So this is a right triangle. See, the 90 degree angle is that little guy right there. That little box means it's 90 degrees. If you see that it's a right triangle, you can use right triangle trig. However, there are many triangles out there that are non-right triangles, such as this. Even though it might look like it's a right triangle, unless you're told it's a right triangle, you can never assume it's a right triangle. This, solving this type of triangle is what we learn in secondary three. A non-right triangle, there's no right angles. We are still going to be able to solve that after this unit. However, in secondary two, you only learn how to solve right triangle. So that's what we're reviewing today is right triangle trig so that we can then get into non-right triangle trig. Everybody understands the difference. Because guess what tends to happen? People get to the ACT or they get to their future math classes and they start using right triangle trig for non-right triangles and it doesn't work. It's not the same. The rules don't apply. So you just have to be careful. All right, so if you have a right triangle, we know that you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find missing side lengths if you are given two sides. So many of you learned the Pythagorean theorem of this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. However, I never call it that because then people get caught up in what's a, b, and c. So instead, I say you take one of the sides squared plus the other side squared, which will be equal to the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So this is the important part to remember with this. The hypotenuse always has to go on this side of the equation. Always. Does everybody understand? Because I don't want to see any weird algebra mistakes on little things. So no matter what, this order doesn't matter, side one and side two, but hypotenuse has to be on this side of the equal sign. You can only use the Pythagorean theorem if you have a right triangle. If you do not and you use it, you might think you're finding the right answer, but you will not be finding the right answer. Luckily today we're dealing with right triangles. So everybody look up here. If I said to you, find the missing side length, I'm going to put a question mark there. Just watch. So isn't that my hypotenuse? So we'll take one of the sides squared, 4 squared, plus the other side squared, which was 3 squared, equals our hypotenuse squared. So that would be 16 plus 9 equals question mark squared. Correct? We're all just watching. So that's 25 equals question mark squared. So what would we do to solve for question mark? Not question mark squared. Square root it. Correct, everybody? Now, if we wanted to be technical, the square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. Correct? However, a side length of a triangle will never be negative, so we would throw that answer out. So x is equal to 5, or question mark is 5. So our hypotenuse is 5. All right, now let's look at this one. This is what I see people do and it's wrong. They go, oh, six squared plus three squared equals question mark squared. That's not how the Pythagorean theorem works. It's side one squared, which, so we're gonna call that question mark, right, everybody, or three or whatever. So question mark squared plus the other side squared, which is three, equals the hypotenuse, so six has to go on this side of the equal sign. Everybody clear on that? So we have question mark squared plus 9 equals what? 36. So now we have question mark squared equals 36 minus 9, right? Everybody? So what is that? So then we would square root both sides, correct? And so we would get question mark is equal to 5. Now your answer should make sense here because your hypotenuse should be your longest leg. Look, five is the longest leg, six is the longest leg. All is well here. Any questions or anything? Okay, awesome. Now, we're not going to always have them come out pretty. For example, let's say we were doing the Pythagorean theorem. You would be expected if you were to get, let's say you got down to this. Question mark squared equals 24, for example. If we square root both sides, it would be a decimal, which is a not acceptable answer because we're able to break down radicals, correct? So we would want the exact answer. So if you had something like that, we would expect you to go 6 times 4, 3 times 2, 2 times 2. So when we plot groups of 2, guys, everybody, yes, we're good. You all know what I'm talking about. So question mark is equal to 2 square roots of 6. That would be how you write it, not decimal. And we've talked about that this year already. Okay, I'm going to push pause for you. All right, okay, now to the six right triangle trig ratios. Okay, these are the six trig ratios you can only use if you have a right triangle. So 
So everybody look up here and understand, this is really important that you understand this. Given a right triangle and an angle theta. Now I put angle theta down here in this triangle. From angle theta, if you draw straight across, wouldn't that be the opposite side from theta? Yes or no? Okay, now across from the 90 degrees is always the hypotenuse. So that means right here sitting adjacent is the adjacent side. We should be able, given theta, no matter where theta is, be able to find the opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. So if I drew a right triangle and put theta up here, you can't always just assume where opposite hypotenuse and adjacent is. It's different for every triangle. So won't this be the opposite side from theta on this one? This is the hypotenuse. This must be adjacent. Okay, got it. Now, these are the trig ratios. I always start with this, sine, cosine, tangent. And there's a little saying. So, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You might want to write these down somewhere on notes or something. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So everybody, you go to theta, sine will be, sine of theta will be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now every teacher gives a little different way to help you remember this. So I use this saying, everybody does it different. So I always, get, when I sit down for a test, a spec, like even a, a ACT anything, I sit down and I write down sine, cosine, tangent. And then I say this saying in my head, oh heck, another hour of algebra. But I say it in a happy voice because I like algebra. Oh heck, another hour of algebra, yay. And I throw an A because that sounds like you're mad. Okay, so everybody say it with me. Oh heck, another hour of algebra or of agony. Some of you feel that way back now, unfortunately. Okay, so then there's other people that remember it as this. So... Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, ka. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then toa. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. However you remember it is good with me, but I'm just going to probably use oh heck, another hour of adjacent. Does that make sense, everybody? Then, cosecant is not the inverse of sine. It's the reciprocal of sine. Reciprocal means you just flip the fraction. So everybody, cosecant will be hypotenuse over opposite. So guys, Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. Notice something interesting here. S and C. A lot of people will think C and C go hand in hand, but that's not how it works. So do you see how S and C are like opposite? You get know what I'm saying? So cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. So it'd be hypotenuse over um, opposite. Um, secant, notice S and C. So secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that'll be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then Cotangent goes hand in hand with tangent. That one's pretty obvious. It's the reciprocal of tangent, which is adjacent over opposite. So if you know sine, cosine, tangent, then you know these three very quickly. Everybody good? No question. We're about to do some examples. So everybody just look up here. Uh, this is number one on your worksheet. Here we go. So it says, find the sine of theta. So it literally just means find sine. That's it. Just find sine. So we know that sine from theta will be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Oh, heck. Right? Sine is the first one. Oh, heck. Everybody? So that's all you got to do. Go to theta. Boom. We need opposite, which is 15. And we need our hypotenuse. Now look, where's my hypotenuse? Across from that 90 degree. Correct? Do we know that? No, but look, we have 15 and 20. Since it's a right triangle, can't we quickly do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the hypotenuse? Yeah? Everybody. So let's quickly go through the map. So we'll do side one squared plus side two squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So side one squared would be 15 squared or 20 squared, order doesn't matter. The other side is 20 squared. Our hypotenuse has to be on this side of the equation, so equals h squared. Solve for H. So you'll type in, go, 15 squared plus 20 squared. Everybody, this is how you'd show your work. So we have 625 equals our hypotenuse squared. We want just hypotenuse, so we'd square root both sides of the equation. So our hypotenuse is 25. So we say sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, which equals from theta, our opposite side is 15, our hypotenuse is 25. That's my answer. But does my answer simplify? Yes. 
15 over 25 simplifies, guys. It's a simple, what do they both divide by? Five, correct? Or you could type in your calculator, 15 divided by 25, math, enter, enter. You get three fifths. So understand, you just found sine. You didn't find theta. That's not what it asked us to find. It said, what is sine of theta? Well, it's three-fifths. So sine of theta is three-fifths. Everybody understand? We're not finding theta. I didn't say to find theta. I said find sine. Sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. That's it. Okay, let's do number 11. It says, now understand, they're going to be a little bit advanced, some of them. You're going to have to use your brain a little bit. It says find cosine of theta. If tangent of theta is 9 squared to 7 over 35. So let's draw a right triangle. This is the most easy way to make sure we don't make an error. So everybody draw a right triangle on your paper. Make a 90 degree angle. Now you have to put theta somewhere. It doesn't matter where. It just can't be in the 90 degree angle. I'm randomly choosing to put it down here. Now after you put in theta, you do have to set up your triangle correctly. What do we know about tangent? Tangent is which trig ratio? Oh heck, another hour, isn't it, of agony? Opposite over adjacent. So from theta, our opposite side, look, from theta, our opposite side is 9 root 7. So I'm going to put it in. Does everybody understand? And then our adjacent side from theta, which is right here, will be 35. So we've got to put that in. So now we're asked to find cosine of theta. So cosine of theta is, oh heck, another hour. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Now look, we know our adjacent side is 35, but we have no idea what our hypotenuse is. So we've got to go through, since we're given two sides of a right triangle, we can find the missing side Pythagorean theorem style. So let's set this up right. Side one squared plus side two squared equals our hypotenuse squared. So 35 squared plus, now do not make algebra mistakes. Isn't it 9 root 7 all squared? That entire side squared. Yes. Mm -hmm. Equals our hypotenuse squared. So when you type this into your calculator, you've got to be very careful. So 35 squared is 1,225 plus. Now people, 90% of the time, but not you, because I warned you, type this into their calculator wrong. Isn't this 9 squared and square root of 7 squared? Okay, what's 9 squared? So we have 81 times, what's the square root of 7 squared? That's easy. 7. So we should be doing 81 times 7 equals our hypotenuse squared. So let's add these up. Go for it. Make sure you can do it right. Did you get 1792 equals our hypotenuse squared? Is everybody caught up mentally to me? Okay, let's square root both sides of the equation. Now type that in and see if it comes out evenly. It doesn't. Now is the decimal answer acceptable? Nope. So we've got to break this down by hand. Here we go. Let's start breaking it down. So we don't know what are the factors of it, so let's just test it out. Divide it by 2. Sure, why not? 2 times 896. Let's divide that by, I don't know. What do you want to do? Four? Sure. Four times 224. Let's divide 224 by four. Or two. Four works. Four times 56. 56 breaks down into eight times seven. Eight breaks down into four times two. Don't these fours break down into two times two? Two times two. Two times two. Now look at how much is going on underneath this radical. We don't want to double dip, so we're going to go cross out everything that we have rewritten as something else. So look, 896 isn't there anymore because we rewrote it as 4 and 24. We rewrote 4, so it's not there. We rewrote that, so it's not there. 4 is not there. 56 is not there. 8 is not there, correct? Isn't 4 not there? So now we can start pulling out groups of 2. So if there's two, they can leave the house. Boom, 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 boom. And then look at this little guy. And I'm going to just do a little, do you see how those two are going to come out? So what's left underneath? A seven. So we pull out two times two. So that's really the square root of four, right, guys? Square root of four is two. Okay, then pulling out another two. And then pulling out another 
two. And then left was our square root of seven because they couldn't leave the house. Two times two times two times two, 16. So this simplified to be 16 root seven. That was all just to find the hypotenuse, 16 root seven. So now we can go ahead and answer the question. What is the cosine of theta? So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 35 over 16 root seven. Now is my answer, does everybody get why I did 35 over 16 root seven? Yeah? Now you say, does my answer simplify or is it acceptable? Good, Joe, we can't have a radical on bottom. So not only that, we've got to go one step further. We're going to rationalize the denominator. So we multiply by root seven over root seven. So on top, we have 35 root seven. And on bottom, don't we have 16 times seven? Guys, or isn't that 16 times the root of 49? Which is 16 times seven, isn't it not? Anybody confused? 16 times seven is 112. So we really have 35 root seven over 112. Now you say, is my answer in the most simplified form? Well, we better check. So take your calculator and do 35 divided by 112, and then hit math, enter, enter. It simplifies to be 5 sixteenths. So this became a 5, this became a 16. So our final answer is cosine of theta equals 5 root 7 all over 16. Does everybody understand how to do this problem? A lot to think about, but really this isn't super, super advanced. This is basic. This is secondary too. You guys good? Let's start practicing though. Yes or no? Need yes. more examples? We're good. So do problems 1 through 12 go. All right. So now it says, find, this is different. People used to get confused with this in secondary two like no other. You're not paying attention. If I say to you, find sine of theta, that's all you do. You stop. You find sine. It's opposite over hypotenuse and done. You don't go any further. However, this says, find the measure of the angle indicated. So now we're going to go all the way. We're going all the way. We're finding theta. Not sine of theta, not cosine, not tangent, but theta. We're finding theta. So everybody look at my two examples up here because I'm not doing any off your worksheet real quick. So everybody, do you see how we have an angle theta? It wants to know what's that angle, what's the actual angle. So we have to come up with a true statement to be able to solve for theta. So from theta, which two sides am I given? Opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. So it would be true to say sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. That's the trig ratio I'm using. Now let's plug in everything we know. It's just algebra. So we know sine of theta. We don't know theta, so we'll call theta theta. Our opposite side is 3. Our hypotenuse is 5. Now everybody, this is really this. Sine of theta. So now it's just algebra. Get theta along. So how do we get theta to get out of sine? We need to undo sine. The only way to undo sine is to apply the sine inverse. So we're trying to get inside these parentheses, just like when we had log of 3x, log of the base 5 of 3x. Do you know how this 3 was trapped? This 3x was trapped inside? We had to undo log, right? And we did base 5. We applied the inverse. So right here, this is trapped inside sine. So the only way to undo sine is to take the sine inverse. Well, if you do it to this side of the equation, you've got to do it to this side of the equation because you can't just do it to one side of the equation. So sine inverse and sine undo each other. That's what inverses do. So now theta drops out. So theta is equal to, and this is the sine inverse of, it traps that stuff, sine inverse of 3 fifths. And now we'll just type it into our calculator. Now understand we're finding an angle, an angle that's a degree measure. Your calculator is automatically in radian mode. So let me show you how to fix your calculator. You've got to remember this when you go to your ACT. So if you're ever typing something in that's in a degree, or if you're trying to find a degree, you've got to go to mode in your calculator. Mode. Now scroll down and see where it says radian. Most people's calculators are automatically on radian. You've got to change it to degree. 
Now, the nice thing is you can leave it in degree mode for mostly all other maths. It won't really affect it. You can just leave it in degree mode, but you've got to make sure if you're ever calculating something and you're trying to find a degree measure or calculating something with the degree that's in degree mode. So hit enter and second quit. Okay, now I need to find sine uh, inverse of three fifths. So you'll do, look, look right here. It says sine inverse above the sine button. So you'll do second sine. That puts in sine inverse of 3 divided by 5. Close your parentheses. 36.8 or 36.9 degrees. It says round to the nearest tenth. So that angle measure was 36.9 degrees. So theta was 36.9 degrees. So we went all the way to find this. Any questions on that? Okay, look up here, one more example. So if I said to you, find the angle measure, we would use which trig ratio? Opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent, which trig ratio? Yep, tangent. So tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Now it's just algebra, plug in what you know. We know it's tangent of theta, we don't know that, but we know our opposite side is 6 and our adjacent side is 7. Now we've got to solve for theta, it's just algebra, so we need to get theta alone, it's trapped inside tangent. So we need to undo tangent. So we take the tangent inverse of both sides of the equation. Tangent inverse undoes tangent, so theta is alone. So we have theta is equal to tangent inverse of 6 divided by 7. Go, type it in for me. What is it? 40.6 degrees. So angle theta was 40.6 degrees. Does everybody understand how to do it? So do you see the difference between find tangent of theta and find theta? Theta we went all the way, where if I said find tangent, you would have stopped here. Does that make sense, everybody, the difference? Yes? Yep. If you go and find theta, and when you're not supposed to, you'll get it wrong. Okay, do 13 through 16 go. Okay, so with this next part, it says find the measure of the missing side or angle. It just depends. So what we do here is we say it's a right triangle. So I'm going to set up a true statement and then use algebra to solve for x here. So everybody look at this. We have a 90 degree angle and a 35 degree angle. I'm going to randomly choose to go with 35. Well, we can't use 90. So I'm going to use 35 degrees. I'm going to call that theta. Everybody understand? Just because it's given. So it makes it easy. Now, from angle theta, we have which sides? Opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig ratio do we have here, then? So, look, the statement is sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now, all we have to do is plug in everything we know. We have sine. We know theta is 35 degrees. Does everybody understand? Equals opposite, which is x over hypotenuse, which is 7. Now look, there's only one unknown, x. Now it's just algebra to solve for x. So you're getting x alone using algebra. How am I going to get x alone? What well, does division, multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 7. Now look, x is alone. So x will be 7 sine of 35 degrees. You might see it written like that on the ACT. And you also might see it as the actual answer. So type it into your calculator. 7 sine of 35. We are not doing an inverse because then if we ended sine, we have a floating 35 degrees, which would be bad news. 7 sine of 35. What's the answer? 4.01. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Let's do another one. So everybody look at another one. One more with me. Because the algebra comes out different for every problem. The algebra doesn't always work out like that. So watch. Given angle theta, I'm going to call this angle theta. We have opposite and adjacent, correct? Which is tangent. So our statement will be tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Plug in everything we know. So tangent of theta is 20 degrees equals opposite, which is 10, over adjacent, which is x. Look at my algebra. Now it's just algebra to solve for x. What should I do here? Should I, should I multiply by 10? No, because then that's 100. That would make it worse. What should we do? Good. Multiply both sides by x. 
So now we have x divides out. So we have this, x tangent of 20 degrees equals 10. Now remember, what's your goal? It's to solve for x. So we have one last step to get x along. Do what? Good, divide by tangent of 20 degrees to both sides of the equation. So you can't do these in your head. You'll get the algebra wrong. Because 10 on top. Does that make sense? If we times by 10, add multiplying by 10 over 1, so that'd be 100 over x, and we've just made it worse. Does that make sense? Good question. But do you see how x fixes it? Because then we can now get x alone. So x will be, you might see it like this on the ACT, 10 over tangent of 20 degrees. That I've seen. Then leave it like that. I've also seen them actually find the answer. So you type in 10 divided by tangent of 20 degrees. 15? Uh oh. 27.4. Cool. Questions on that? Okay. Go for it. 17 through 20. Make sure you're skipping and staying with me. Do 17 through 20 go. Remember back to secondary two, learned about special right triangles. Raise your hand. I'm just curious. Awesome. Okay. So they're just what are called special right triangles. So understand we have right triangles. And that 190 degree angle, these two angles can be split up into any other two things. Now, all three angles add up to 180, correct, everybody? But we can split up these two angles, however. Now, there are these special right triangles that happen when we have 45, 45, 90. That's because this angle is 45, this angle is 45. So they're the exact same. So those are split evenly. When that happens, guys, this side across from the 45, will be the same as this side, across from the 45. Because if angles are equal, their sides must be equal as well. Does that make sense, everybody? Then there's also 30, 60, 90 degree triangles, and they have a special relationship, um, and we'll get into that. Now, we're going to actually look at this differently in secondary three. In secondary two, you memorize some things, like the relationships, but in secondary three, we start using the unit circle. So that's what I want to start us on today. So we're just going to use quadrant one, and on a different day, I'm going to teach you all about the unit circle, where it comes from, what it means, but today I'm just going to show you a couple quick things about it, and we're going to use it. So we're going to focus in on quadrant one. What the unit circle is, is, just, is it's just a bunch of triangles. So um, right here, if I started here, this is over, the point over one of zero. A uh, unit circle has a radius of one. So this is a length of one right here. Everybody comfortable with that? So just a couple of quick things. Um, so if I go up and draw, go up to this angle, do you see how if I drop down and make a 90 degree angle? I now just have a right triangle. Everybody? So I went up, this says 30 degrees. So this would be 30 degrees down here. Everybody seeing the right triangle? So if I went up to this point and I dropped down, I would have a right triangle right here. And that would be a 45, 45, 90, and so on. So this is just a bunch of right triangles. I'm going to erase that. Now, on the unit circle, there's a couple of things you can memorize. And that is, these are some x, y points from special right triangles, some special angles here. So these are x, y points. Look, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So one thing to note is that cosine is x and sine is y. So it's just kind of a quicker way to know some answers here. So the unit circle gives us a way to quickly know what the cosine is at a certain special right triangle. So everybody, you're going to want to write that down. Cosine is x, sine is y. If you don't have that written down, you're going to forget. So if I said to you, what's the cosine of 45 degrees? We don't even have to have a triangle drawn because we can use our unit circle. So everybody look at 45 degrees. I'm looking at this special right triangle right here. Do you see how I went up to 45 degrees, everybody? I don't have to have a triangle to know what the cosine is. The cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2 because cosine is x. Does everybody understand? Root 2 over 2. That's an exact answer. Now, that's way prettier than the decimal answer, which is what your calculator would give you if you... Type in, type in cosine of 45 degrees. It's going to give you a decimal answer. If you're ever asked what's the cosine of 45 degrees, you're going to be expected to give the exact answer, which you won't be able to give. Your calculator can't give it to you. Does that make sense, everybody? Now, I, like I said, on a different day, I'll teach you how to fill in the unit circle. We'll get it memorized and practice it, but not today. 
The stranger's going to give it to you, okay? So everybody, what's the sine of 45 degrees? So sine is y. Root 2 over 2. Now, does that answer make sense? Cosine of 45 degrees and sine of 45 degrees. Yeah, because they're the same, because they're going to have the same side lengths, because they're both 45 degrees. Does that make sense, everybody? Kind of? Okay, so what's the cosine of 30 degrees? So locate 30 degrees. So what's cosine of 30 degrees? Square root of 3 over 2. Does everybody understand? So what's the sine of 30 degrees? One half. Do you see how that's almost easier than even drawing a triangle and having to figure it all out? You get what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So we could do 60 degrees, but we're not going to because you guys get how, it, get how it works. Okay, that brings me to 22. So what I want you to notice about 22 is are we dealing with a special right triangle? Yes. This is the first time on this worksheet that we've been dealing with a special right triangle because, look, this is 45 degrees. Now, we can kind of think about this one really quite easily. So if this is 45 degrees right here, what's this? 45 degrees. So if this is 45 degrees and this side is 5 root 2, what do we know about y? y must also be 5 root 2. So we write, write y is equal to 5 root 2. So now let's put this in. We have this. We have a right triangle. We have this is 5 root 2 right here because it's 45. This is 45. This is 5 root 2. So now can't we find x very quickly? Pythagorean theorem. Correct, everybody. So we didn't even have to use the unit circle for this one because 45, 45 were the easiest one. So let's do the Pythagorean theorem. Side 1 squared plus side 2 squared equals hypotenuse squared. So what's side 1? You got to put parentheses 5 root 2 all squared plus side 2. 5 root 2 all squared equals our x squared. So our hypotenuse is x. Solve for x. So you would do 25 times 2, wouldn't you? Right, guys? Because it's 5 squared and root 2 squared. We're not going to make that tragic mistake. So that's 25 times 2, which is 50, plus 50 equals x squared. So 100 equals x squared, correct? So then we would square root both sides, so x equals 10. So we found x to be 10, and we found y to be 5 root 2. There's our two answers. Questions on that? Pretty easy? 45, 45, 90 are the easiest ones. Okay, let's do one where we will use our unit circle. All right, so everybody look up here. We On 21, we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. If this is 60, then this is 90. This must be 30 degrees. Now, I'm going to randomly choose to go with 60 degrees just because that's what was given. I just wanted you to notice this is a special right triangle. I'm going to call this theta. Now, I'm going to set up a trig ratio. Let's do our hypotenuse first. So adjacent and hypotenuse uses which trig ratio? Cosine, correct? So we know that cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now let's plug in everything we know. Cosine of 60 degrees equals adjacent, which is 1, over our hypotenuse, which is x. And now it looks no different than what we just did. So all for x. So we would multiply both sides by x. So now we would have x cosine of 60 degrees equals 1. Solving for x, but what I do next? Divide by cosine of 60. Divide by cosine of 60. Now understand, if you type that into your calculator, you're going to get it wrong. Because this is a special right triangle. That means we can figure out the exact value of cosine at 60 degrees. So we have x is equal to 1 over, you cannot type this one into your calculator, because once again, it's a special angle. So look at my unit circle. Locate 60 degrees. Everybody see it. What is cosine at 60 degrees? x, correct? 1 half. So isn't this x is equal to 1 divided by 1 half? Because cosine of 60 is 1 half, everybody. You see what I did there? Any questions on that? So I replace that with what it is. It's 1 half. So we have this. I want to see your work. So we have x is equal to 1 divided by 1, because 1 is 1 over 1, divided by 1 half. Correct, everybody? 
Why did I do that? Because dividing fractions is easy as pi. We flip the second fraction and we multiply. So we multiply straight across and we get two. That one, if you did type it into your calculator, would have come out because it happened to be a whole number. However, lots of these are not going to come out to be a whole number. Like it might come out two root three. Does that make sense? And we wouldn't have been able to do that unless we did it this way. So we got two. So I guess you can type it into your calculator and if it comes out a whole number, you're good. But if not, then you've got to simplify it by hand. Does that make sense, everybody? So we have this. Erase two root three. So right here is two root three. So now we can find y. So we can do the Pythagorean theorem from here. So we would do, maybe, you're right. I just said root three, but it wasn't root three, was it? It was just two, right? So we have one squared plus y squared equals our hypotenuse, which is two squared, solve for y. So that's one plus y squared equals four, correct? Everybody? Subtract one, subtract one. So y squared equals three. Square root both sides. So y is equal to root three. Questions on that? I feel like we might need one more example. Do we? Are we good? One more? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's do one more. Let's see, which is a good one that will come out where I can prove my point a little bit. Maybe number 24. No, a lot of these are coming out whole numbers. How about you guys just try it? Just try it, and then if you get stuck, I can help you. Ready, set, go. So for these, decimal answers are never acceptable, so see if you can just start going for it, and then I can help you one-on-one. -on -one. 